Hey, welcome back. So this video is going to expand a little bit on some of the concepts that we talked about in the first two Wi-Fi security videos. And the first thing I, okay, really the thing that I want to cover in this video is client isolation because I've been seeing some questions about that. And in the last video, we created firewall rules that will segregate uh, any traffic from ETH1 to ETH2 and vice versa. But that is different than client isola isolation because what we did there was we created firewall rules that just do not allow that traffic. Client isolation actually does what it says. It isolates the client in the network from being able to, I mean, it can't see any other um, host on the network. It can get out to the gateway and, and do what it needs to do, but it cannot see other guests, other clients. It can't get to infrastructure devices. And there's actually a lot of subnets that it can't get to. Let, let's take a look in the controller here. So we will go over to settings. And this is in Unify. So this is even above and beyond. And this is assuming you're using Unify access points, which if you're not, in my opinion, you should be, but if you haven't figured that out on this channel, we're, uh, we're big into ubiquity around here. So we're going to go to our wireless networks, and I created a, another one because on FBI van, we're going to turn the client isolation on, and you're going to see what happens. And so then I've got this other network as a backup so that I can get into the device and show you what's going on. About this is that the access point handles all of this through uh, it's either EV tables or IP tables but we'll we'll look at that and as we're gonna turn on the guest network within Unify so no matter what's doing your layer 3 routing or what your layer 2 connectivity devices whether it's a Unify switch an edge switch a D-Link a Cisco whatever you know this will work across the board because the access points actually handling that guest control so to turn that on in the Unify controller you pull up your wireless network and there's this little checkbox that says apply guest policies so once you do that and you save it now um, the access point is going to reprovision and it's probably reprovisioning as we speak but Okay, so we're resolving it, but we can't connect to it. Why can't we connect to it? Because in the setup, there are three main lists of IPs that once you click that little box, clients cannot get to those. And this is my uh, controller internally, which has an IP of 192.168.66.10. Um, and we are blocking all access to that through the client isolation and you'll see oh so you can see that it uh, swapped us over to the the public Wi-Fi that I've got set up where my my kids authenticate so uh, what we can actually do is we can join I created an even more or an, uh, created a, a fourth network so we'll go ahead and join that. We're now connected to that. So now we should be able to refresh this guy. Okay, so it's going to come up. So when we look at guest control, post authorized restrictions. These subnets, so you can see my client is isolated from being able to touch other clients or devices whatever you want to call them in those subnets so that, that's how that works and the access the access points actually handling all of that and if you want to look at that first we got to find out what our what our device is here 66.101 
Okay, so the Unify Access Points run this version of BusyBox. It's Linux. Um, you can do a help and see the commands that are available to you there. But what we're looking for actually exists in the TMP temp directory off the root. And you can see there are a few files in there. And if we want to look at the running config, uh, I don't believe more works. It does not. So we'll just use Vi, which is the editor that's included. And we'll look at running.cfg. So it's running.config. You can see that we are on Unify version 5.2. You can see the time zones. Admin, the password there is disabled. Uh, we're going to go in here and we're going to talk about the radios and the WLANs. So let's see if we can find something here. Okay, so you see this where it says wireless one L2 isolation disabled. One of our networks actually has that enabled, and you'll see that here in a minute. Uh, so, this is uh, the SSID America. I do believe that's what that one was. Wireless 2. Yeah, America. So we're going to scroll down and we're going to find that isolation. Okay, so it's right here. So it says uh, layer 2 isolation enabled. So we've got that, that isolation enabled. So if we go further down in the running configure the access point. Okay, so there you see the band steering options, the ubiquity roaming. VLAN status space there, the firewall. And okay, so here we have EB tables, uh, is apparently the piece of software that is taking care of this. So we talk about guest in, guest out, pre routing, post routing. And when you get down here in the config of this, let's see, need to widen this a little, maybe. So back up here, you can see where it's dropping the traffic to the 192.168.0.0 slash team 16, the 172.16.0.0 slash 12, the 10.0.0.0 slash 8. So this is how the access point's actually taking care of that for us. So and it's just a checkbox, and then you don't have to worry about it. So you you cannot achieve easily this level of granularity with just an edge router. So we should use, you know, an edge router in conjunction with, you know, a Unify access point and the Unify controller software and enable that. So that's just a little bit about how that works. The next video, I'll talk about this um, probably. I've had some requests to actually set this up live. So maybe the next video, what we'll do is we'll do a comparison of the security just on an edge router. Um, and we'll use our, our lab edge router that we've been configuring. We'll plug an access point in there. We'll connect to it. And we'll look at the, the difference then between just doing the firewalling where we can't do subnets at the router level and then actual client isolation. But when the client isolation is enabled, you could see it. I couldn't even get to the controller because it was a 192.168.66 address. So it works pretty well. So I hope you liked the video. Please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe, please comment, and we will see you at part four.